Good evening and welcome back to Prime of Midlife. It's Monday evening and tonight we are talking rationing. Mm -hmm. Yep, I know. I was so shocked, I took notes. There you go. Now, back in 2021, this article seemingly was sent into wherever it is. Um, and the Daily Mail has done a report about it today. It was published yesterday, I think, online. And it's two UK scientists who have talked about how rationing would be a good idea for cutting climate emissions rapidly and fairly. And in some ways I understand it and in some ways I don't and in some ways I agree with it and in other ways I don't. So I thought what I would do is I would take my little notes and I will tell you what they're saying. And then we can have a think and we can go, hmm. So... The title of the paper, which I will put the link in the description box, um, is Rationing and Climate Change Mitigation. And what they're saying is that World War II style rationing could help with cutting down emissions from petrol, meat and energy in homes. Not okay. So... What they're saying is if they do World War II style rationing, it means that it, it can go around everywhere, starting with petrol, meat and energy. Um, also, the government could restrict the number of long haul flights or the amount of petrol that you're allowed per month. So, of course, the first thing I'm thinking is, are you having a laugh? What are you going to do? Just tell us we can't do this while all you and your hobnob friends are, are given at large. Um, but then next it went on to say previous schemes that have been suggested won't work because they favour the wealthy. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, you can keep talking. So then it goes on to say that carbon rationing would allow people to receive an equal amount of resources therefore sharing the need to protect the planet. So that's where I was sort of like, okay, I get where you're coming from because if it was rationing like it was in World War Two, then it didn't matter how much money you had, your rations were all the same. I mean, all right, people with money got stuff in the black market, that will always happen. Um, but the majority of people, the things that they had on ration everyone got the same and you just had to deal with it. So it's like, okay, so you're agreeing that, you know, normally if, if things are re restricted, normally that doesn't count for the wealthy. So you're like, okay, so what, what's my next thing? Oh yeah, so the reason things were rationed in World War II is because there wasn't enough of them. There was a scarcity of meat, veg, material for clothing, petrol, etc. And <clears throat> because there was a scarcity, that's why everyone agreed, yep, it has to be rationed. So there was no sort of outcry against it. So what they suggest to make a scarcity is that the government could regulate the biggest polluters like oil, gas, petrol, flights and farming, like intensive farming, to create a scarcity. So basically the government regulates them so hard that there's very little still available and then it gets rationed because there is now a scarcity. Um, normally a scarcity would favour the rich because if something is scarce, the price goes up. You and I can't afford it, but, you know, Elon Musk can afford millions of it. But if they make a scarcity and ration it, doesn't matter how many millions Elon Musk has got, he's still got to only get this. Technically. Theoretically. I mean, none of us believe that, but, you know, the theory is, is that it doesn't matter how rich you are. And what they have suggested, there's two suggestions. Um, you could have an all-encompassing carbon card and that that's how much carbon you're allowed. So whether it's meat, flights, home energy, blah, blah, blah. 
your card will have your allowances on that. Or they could ration select goods such as flights, petrol, energy, etc. So this is what has been published by UK scientists today. And mm, no happy. I'm I'm my wee toes doing tappy tappy here. Um, I'm I'm just not liking this because I'm not liking the fact that the way the world has gone just now. Unless you are a multi-millionaire, you've got very little control, and you've got very little people looking out for you, and you're definitely the bottom of the rung. And the people, especially recently in the UK with the Tory party, but also so many other places in the world. This is not a UK only thing. So many other places in the world, it's people with money who control everything. And to give those people with money the control of the rations is, I think, a bit of a, a bit of a worry. Um, they have said there that one of the things that they, if you had like a carbon card or whatever, the whole reason that they want to go for World War II ration type thing is that it wouldn't be tradable because this carbon offsetting that companies are doing just now is just a load of rubbish. Um, it doesn't particularly help anything. Um, so what they're saying is, no, it would be that you have this carbon allowance and it's absolutely not tradable. I think we all know in the last few years, as the rich have got richer and the poor have got a lot poorer, that the rich would have a whole wee set up to themselves. Um, but that doesn't mean that I think, do you know, in, in one way saying that sounds like I'm saying rationing would be a good idea. I just don't think it would work. I don't think rationing is a good idea at the moment, although I've still got in the back of my head. If you could make it work that it actually did, I can see the point of thinking that way. But does any of us believe that it actually would work and that there would not be people in governments and in multi-conglomerates and all these people in the finance companies and investment banks who'd be like, oh no, but we need more and there would be loopholes. So, yeah, it's certainly something to think about. It's certainly something that I think is probably going to get um, thrown about a lot of places over the next few weeks, if not months. Um, so, yeah, rationing has been put forward by UK scientists as a way forward through the carbon crisis. And... Do you know, when we think of it, we think of World War Two. right? You know, the mum with her... Or the housekeeper with her, her, her wicker basket going down to the shop with the with the ration card. Um and it was all local shops and it was all you know, there was local producers giving to local shops, etc. etc. Who controls the energy? Hmm? I mean EDF is one of the energy companies in Britain, it's owned by France, it's owned by the French government. So Who's going to get EDS energy? Is it going to be us or is it going to go to France if they're short? You know, the petrol companies, ESO, Shell. Who's to say how much they will give to each country? Because it's a multinational company. There's a whole lot of stuff that could go very, very squinty with this as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, prep more. Because meat's one of the things, farming... Um, somebody said in the comments they heard in LBC today about talking about a shortage of fresh fruit and veg. Um, so, yeah. But that rationing has, has quite sort of like, oh, it's out there now. It's out there now. There'll be somebody in the government will pick that up. Nothing surer. Somebody's job to pick stuff like that up. So, yeah, me... I'm going to go and make myself another cup of tea, possibly have some chocolate biscuits to console myself. And I will catch you later.